You're wondering which niche you should choose for a new site, or maybe you're considering acquiring a site and trying to decide if that's a good niche to be in. Well, I want to share with you my three criteria for choosing a lucrative niche. Now, I'm going to start off with number one, but I don't think number one is the most important. This was a real kind of toss up in my mind before I started recording this. Do I put number two as number one or do I put number one as number two, etc. right? But number one is really kind of preliminary foundational. But I think number two, as we get into it, you'll see is the most important. And I'm going to share some examples with you of all of them. So first of all, let's start with number one. There must be ample search volume in the niche. Okay, my rule of thumb is that there should be at least 10 keywords with 2,000 plus monthly search volume. We're going to look at some examples in a second. But first, let's just kind of focus on this principle. There must be ample search volume, right? The way an authority site or niche site makes money uh, or ultimately grows is by people finding it via search. So you have to be publishing content that people are searching for and sa subsequently satisfying that search intent. I made a video recently about the mistakes that people make with niche sites and one of the uh, big mistakes that I see is they create content that is not satisfying a search volume or that's not satisfying a search intent, right? So they just, and this happens a lot with passion type of topics or people that are passionate about a topic when they get into it, uh, they just kind of publish on what they think is what's interesting to other people, but that is not what other people are searching for. So you have to keep that in mind if you're getting into any type of uh, website content business, whether we call this a niche site or authority site, whatever it is, you have to publish on topics that people are searching for. There must be ample search volume. If you want to, you know, get into a content business where you're not publishing on search topics or publishing where there's search volume, a blog is probably not the best medium to do it on, right? Like, for example, you might have great expertise in a particular area uh, where there's not a lot of people searching. You might have interesting stories in an area where people are not exactly searching for stories, but if they heard them, they would be cool, right? Well, if that's the type of content you want to share and syndicate and ultimately monetize, you should probably look to a different channel other than a content blog style website. And I'm talking by other channel, I'm talking maybe a podcast or a YouTube channel, right? Where the content is more easily shareable and consumed. Uh, whereas with a blog, it relies on people finding it. So there must be ample search volume. I hope I made that clear. Let me give some examples, right? So first, let's just take a look at German Shepherds, right? Say you want to start a site on German Shepherds or maybe even bigger dogs, but uh, German Shepherds, if we come to all of them, where am I at? I'm in questions right now. This is not, these numbers don't seem right, by the way. But maybe they are. Right. Um. Yeah, okay. I was actually expecting these numbers to be much higher. So these numbers are actually lower than I was expecting. Do I have a filter on here or something? I was, I was expecting much, much higher numbers than this. Uh, but I'm saying as a rule of thumb, we should look for, <clears throat> excuse me, we should look for at least 10 keywords with 2,000 plus monthly search volume, right? Uh, here, we're definitely not making that. I mean, we're there's not 10 of them with 2,000 monthly search volume. Now, I'm not saying it's a hard number, but I'm saying that's about where I'd draw the line. I would probably say in looking at this, uh, German Shepherd's probably too light for me. I probably would not go into this. I like big search volume. Let's type in another one here. I don't know if that's just, if that's just German Shepherd's or if that's just broadly all dogs. All right, so poodles, okay, poodles, there are all kinds of them here, right? And you can see there's plenty of keywords with more than 2,000 a month monthly search volume. So there's all kinds of stuff. And then if you come to the questions in this tab, there are questions with more than 2,000 monthly search volume for poodles. So you can see there's a lot more traffic here. Um, so that was a good example. The first one is an example of something you don't want to target, German Shepherds, right? Now, maybe you do want to target German Shepherds. We'll talk about that in a second. But, uh, you know, primarily, I wouldn't really want to jump into that. I like big search volume terms. Um, another market that I'm familiar with is contractor marketing. As you may or may not know this about me, but I actually own and invest in offline home service contracting businesses. I hold a couple of contractors licenses here in Florida. That's primarily how I make my bread and butter. 
right? So if we type in contractor marketing and switch it back to all, uh, you can see there's none of them have search volume beyond 2,000, yet alone 10 of them, right? So even if you want HVAC marketing, roofing contractor marketing, digital marketing for contractors, I mean, this is just incredibly low search volume. You're not going to be able to get enough volume uh, to actually have a blog, et cetera, in this space. So there must be ample search volume. Always, always check that. And, you know, going back, tying this into my other video on the mistakes that I see people making with niche sites is you have to publish to satisfy the search intent. You cannot just publish whatever you want. So I'll link to that video below this. Number two, number two, this is my favorite. This is the one that I think is the most important out of all these. You must be able to add value beyond generic writing. Okay, so much of the world out there on the internet, the internet, so much, so much of the internet world is just generic writing rewritten and rewritten over by generalist writers. You have to be able to add value beyond that. The internet does not need another product review blog from people that haven't actually used the product or even had their hands on it. It doesn't need another how-to blog post that gives some vague overview of the 10 steps of how to do something but after you read it, you don't actually know how to do it or what to do, right? So you need to be able to add value beyond generic writing. That might be, you know, sharing your own personal insight and expertise, hiring expert writers, doing your own research, independent research, creating video content. Let's show some examples of this here. The first one is backfire.tv. And this website here is about, I think, guns and hunting. Uh, type of stuff. I'm not really into the big, you know, I'm really not big into the guns and hunting space here, but I've seen this website from one of the founders of Income School, and, you know, he's actually getting his hands on these products in testing them. Okay. This one here, another Income School client, and mind you, I'm not, uh, I'm not affiliated or associated with Income School as of recording this video, but I do follow their content, and I do think that they put out a lot of good insight and info into actually growing a website. Anyhow, uh, this person runs this cruise blog here and actually goes on the cruise, takes pictures, videos, and stuff, and reviews them. Okay, so that is value-added content beyond generic writing. And then finally, there is... Oops, I did not put it up here. Um, well, here, we'll take a look at this one. Fit Healthy Mama. Uh, this woman makes videos or blog posts on fitness type of stuff. All right, so this is value-added com content. But the other one I was going to show you is OutdoorGearLab.com, right? So here they actually get the products, take them out, and test them. So this is value-added beyond generic writing, okay? And I think this is incredibly, incredibly important because, as I said, the Internet does not need another product review blog from people that haven't actually touched the products or more generic content like that. And I think that Google, uh, it would be in their best interest and it would certainly serve the end user well if they could filter out all that generic content and only put the truly valuable content up front. I guess that is the whole big mission of Google search. So, you know, you're, it's best if you can, I don't want to say accommodate that, but it, you're going to do best if you ultimately um, jive with Google's long-term mission, which is putting that best content in front of the user. So that's what I'm saying. You've got to be able to add value beyond generic writing. And if you can do that, you will get much more success uh, than you will if you're just doing generic content. That's why when I see generic content out there and you know I see people making a ton of money with it, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, you're making a ton of money, but that's not really going to stand the test of time. Right? Google ultimately does not want to serve generic content to its users. So at some point, sooner or later, you know, it might be tomorrow, it might be next month, it might be 10 years, um, you know, that content is going to kind of get pushed further, further down the search engines, and the better content is going to get pushed up top. And I think already, you know, I've seen the trend over the last 10 years or 12, 13 years that I've been in the internet marketing and search engine content type of business, I've seen Google make killer, killer, killer progress from what the search results were back in 2009, 2010, when I first started getting into it, right? So yeah, adding value beyond generic writing, I think is something, if you can do that for a niche, that is really, really the best one to go with. Um, you know, on top of the search volume, it has to be ample search volume, right? You don't wanna go into a low, no search volume uh, niche and then try to add 
value beyond the generic writing. You're not really going to get anywhere with that yet. There has to be search volume. But then once you get into those and you've identified ones that do have search volume, where you can add the most value is certainly where you want to go. And finally, monetization beyond Amazon or display ads, right? So those are the two common ways that websites are monetized. Amazon affiliate, or you know, likewise other shopping affiliates, Wayfair has one, uh, but most people go with Amazon just because Amazon is just so freaking huge and everybody buys on Amazon at this point. And then also display ads. Now, what I'm saying is you should be able to monetize your niche you know, with something beyond that. But if you're just uh, doing, let's just say a product review blog on coffee makers, I don't know if that's a good one, right? But the way that you would commonly monetize that is through Amazon affiliate links. But what happens if Amazon just disappears? Or not disappears, but their affiliate program disappears specifically. And that's not far-fetched. They've cut the commissions. Uh, quite frankly, I don't believe that they really need the Amazon affiliate program anymore. And I'm sure that they've got an internal team, you know, looking at the actual numbers on it and trying to decide when they're going to cut it or if they're going to cut it or how much they can cut the revenues by, right? So you shouldn't rely on that. With display ads, I feel that display ads fundamentally go against Google's objective to serve the best content to users because we've all been on a site that's loaded with display ads. And sometimes you can't even tell what is like content in the body on the site and what is actually a display ad, you know? So uh, I think those are also not a long-term play. I really think that there needs to be, or I don't think, I'm gonna say that there needs to be monetization beyond Amazon or display ads. So I pulled this example right here, Ty the dog guy, right? And I mean, I think fundamentally this website is really a content-based website. There's blog style content, there's video content on it. Uh, I did not check the history to see how it got started, but he also offers an online course on dog training, okay? So he could, you know, do the typical Amazon product affiliates, and maybe he's got that in there, but he's got his own product beyond the Amazon affiliate offers. So always look at that. How can you monetize this beyond Amazon affiliate or Google Display Ads? Is that creating and launching your own product? Is that maybe in some way partnering with another brand that has actual um, product in your space that's related to your audience. Uh, let's see here. Is it another affiliate program, right? Where you're working direct with the brand. Okay, so, you know, for something that doesn't come on, that, that you can't buy on Amazon, like, well, I don't know, maybe those one wheel things. I've been looking at those lately. Um, but, you know, those little one wheel type of scooters and you know, here, we'll just pull it up. I'm not sure if you can get these on Amazon, right? But let's just say that you couldn't, right? Maybe you made a direct deal with One Wheel to be an affiliate for them. And there are companies that do this. They have affiliate programs, but their affiliate program is not publicly open or publicly stated or promoted. But they do have actual affiliates out there and affiliate deals. Performance marketing is what it would be called. Um, where they've actually got people that are promoting it and receiving commissions on it. And they're very highly selective of who they choose. But this would be another way that you could monetize a website or a niche without actually getting you know, involved in the Amazon or doing your own type of product. So uh, what I'm saying here is basically a direct to brand affiliate program. These typically work best with products that are not associated or not sold on Amazon or other e-tailers. So uh, affiliate with direct to consumer brands is what I'm talking about. So those are the three criteria that I would look for to choose a lucrative niche.